The Azores Islands, located in the heart of the Atlantic Ocean, are a sanctuary for wildlife. Specialist stations. A lot of animals migrate through these waters and stay in the islands only for a couple of weeks or months. But some like living here and stay in the islands all year round. These are called the resident species. I partnered with Futurismo, a local whale watching company, to go out and film these animals in their natural habitat. On the islands, no whale watching company uses tags or sonars for detection, as it interferes with their natural communication. Instead, they use a very old method that remotes back to the whaling times. Whales used to be hunted in the Azores up until 1986. During those times, whalers used a system called the lookouts. The lookouts were people located in strategic points on the shore, about 100 meters above the sea surface. Using very powerful binoculars to survey the ocean, they looked for signs of animals. After spotting the animal, they would use smoke signals to call the boats to that area. After whale hunting was prohibited in the islands, a smooth transition was made into whale watching. The lookouts kept their jobs, but this time trying to find whales for people to admire. My first time going out to sea to watch whales and dolphins was with Futurism, and after so many trips I started learning the methods used by the lookouts to spot these animals. The usual things the lookouts try to look for are strange movements on the sea surface, splashes, and in some cases big amounts of birds. When dolphins are feeding, it's very common for seabirds to gather and try to get an easy catch, taking advantage of the dolphin's work. Common dolphins are one of the four resident species of the Azores. They get this name because they've been spotted in every ocean in the world, except for the polar regions. They travel in large groups of around 10 to 50 individuals and sometimes gather in schools containing 100 to 2,000. As union makes strength, it's very common for small animals to travel in large groups as it is a way to defend themselves from predators. These dolphins feed mainly on fish and squids. The fishermen of the Azores have a conflicting relationship with these dolphins. Due to their echolocation, Dolphins can distinguish the hook from the squid, and because of this, they're able to steal the catch from the fishermen, only leaving the squid's head, which is the less tasteful part. Besides being sneaky, common dolphins are also great acrobats. Some of the reasons they breach and tail slap are to remove parasites, to attract a potential mate, or simply to just have fun. Unlike these gleeful dolphins, the Rizos dolphins, or grampus, that live in the Azores, are very shy, and it's very rare for them to come close to boats. They can be easily identified due to their scars. Rizos dolphins are grey all over when they're born, but as they mature they get scars and start turning whiter. A Rizos dolphin's age can be estimated by how white they are. Much like the common dolphins, the bottlenose dolphins are also very acrobatic. Compared to the other resident dolphins of the Azores, bottlenose dolphins are much bigger, reaching 4 meters in length. They're very curious dolphins, so it's very common to see them close to the boats, often seen boat riding. This is when the dolphins use the boat as a way to swim without spending as much energy, by swimming in the waves under the boat. They are the most common species of dolphins to be found in captivity, since they are very intelligent and are easy to train. Unfortunately, being in captivity makes these dolphins depressed. Since they are very social animals, they love to be surrounded by other dolphins. And when they are in captivity, they are usually alone or with one or two more dolphins. 
They need constant mental simulation, and that's not easy to achieve by being in a tank. But there's a bigger issue that these animals face. With more and more plastic ending up in the ocean, it's becoming more frequent to find animals surrounded by trash or stuck in fishing nets. There are efforts in picking up trash by biologists and conservationists, but this is not enough. So a program was created to encourage the island residents to pick up trash for themselves. This program was called the Guardians of the Azores. With this program and many other initiatives to clean up the ocean, a resident species won't face such a problem. The most affected of all of them are the sperm whales, the fourth and last resident of the islands. Since they rely on echolocation and feed, it's very difficult for them to tell the difference between a plastic bag and a squid. So it's very easy for them to end up eating plastic. Although they face these issues, the islands have become a sanctuary for them. They're protected. And these efforts have made a difference since they give birth in our waters. It's very special that they are comfortable and feel protected enough to birth in the Azores. Since females spend all year round in these islands, it's a clear sign that the efforts for the protection of the sperm whales are working. The male migrates from the polar regions and only stops in the Azores to breed. But this doesn't happen with all sperm whales. There's a male that has been spotted all year round in the sea of the Azores. He was first spotted in the year 2000, and by being so reliable to find, he was named Mr. Liable. It is said that Mr. Liable likes the female sperm whales of the Azores way too much to migrate. So, unlike all other males, he stays here all year round. The way that Mr. Liable can be identified is by using a technique called photo identification. Sperm whale's tails, as well as dolphin's fins, are unique. They're their fingerprints. So by photographing their tails and fins, the biologist can identify each individual. And that is how it's known that Mr. Liable has been in these waters for such a long time. Male sperm whales are very easy to spot. They have a big concavity at the back of their heads and when comparing their sounds to the females, they're much stronger. One day, the biologists aboard of the trip decided to put the hydrophone in the water, since the lookouts weren't spotting any whales. And what they heard were very strong clicks of an allegedly large male sperm whale. Sperm whale clicks is how they echolocate, and these are audible to humans because they're extremely loud. After hearing how loud this whale was, the biologists decided to go after it. And this was done by driving for a bit, then putting the hydrophone in the water to try and get a direction of where it was going, and driving again some more, and repeating the process. This went on for about 40 minutes, until we finally saw a big blow at the distance. What we came across with was well worth the wait. The sperm whale was the biggest one I saw in all my trips. Maybe even bigger than Mr. Liable. He gave us an amazing show, which was rewarding after so much time spent tracking him. By going out to sea for the first time at 22 years old, I finally learned why the people on the islands love the sea so much and everything that lives in it. The ocean conservation of the Azores is getting better every year. These waters were made into aquatic havens by the local communities to safeguard the richness and diversity of the ecosystems the marine life here depend on. Adios, goodbye. See you later. It was an amazing experience to be able to see these animals for the first time out of the screen. And my memories of these animals in the wild will be something I'll never forget. <laughs>